always say Italian yeah. women would be the best detectives. Like, yeah, there'd be right. no unsolved mysteries if we were just yeah. the detectives. Yep. No, you room. need a pissed off Italian woman. And be like, do you? <laughs> where were you last night? I'll tell you where you were last night. This is night. what you were doing. <laughs> How does she know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And welcome back to another edition of Dive In Deep with the Dirty Water Boys. Dirty Water Don, and to my left. Animal. And today in the studio we have Terra Jokes. That's it. It's Terror easier jokes. than saying my last I name. I cannot say it. Let's try it. What is your last Canis name? Canis Tracy. Canis Tracy. Now that the camera's on me, I feel like I can pronounce it better. Okay. Canis Tracy. There you go. So you're stand-up. You yeah. A lot of, lot of stand-up? A little stand-up? How much stand-up? No, no, no. I do stand-up almost every night. Almost and every I night. And I travel every weekend almost. What's the furthest you've traveled to perform stand-up? Hmm, maybe... I mean, out of the country, Vancouver, I would say, is the furthest. You've never went to, like, the motherland, to Italy? and I've been to Italy. I haven't performed comedy in Italy yet. I wonder if there'd be a difference with the uh, language barrier, if the jokes would still land. It depends on where you are, mm-hmm. like, tourist-wise and things like that. When you go into cities, like in Paris, they have English-speaking comics. Okay. You know, at the Apollo there. And I think the furthest like I've that. traveled was Portugal. I wasn't a tourist area. And they still queen English or Portuguese, and it was very difficult to... Mm-hmm. Have conversations with people. So, how long have you been performing stand up? Performing full, like regularly, t- like almost 12 years now. 12 years. Oh. Is it lucrative? Yeah, yeah now. <laughs> so, you know, not initially. <laughs> uh, you know, I did Gotta jokes, the work I did jokes yeah. with pizza and ticket drinks at some point in my life. You tell jokes you with know, pizza? <laughs> and ticket, you know, whatever the shows were, you know. Twenty-five dollar spots and things like that. Nothing right. that's going to pay your bills. Sometimes initially. it costs tra- traveling there is oh, more money than you're what you're getting. You're investing in yeah. yourself. There were times I'd get road gigs and I'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna, you know, make a hundred to spend too." Just in gas and tolls and hotel. But you do it. You got to yeah. You, yeah. you pay your dues. You pay your dues. Right on. Literally. <laughs> what is what is the biggest place you've sold out or even even did stand up at? Biggest place I've done stand up at. I mean, this weekend I did fifteen hundred people in the Count Basie. Wow. Now, do you get a uh, taste of ticket sales? Vic did potato. Uh, yeah, you know, it depends on, like, I all these. Vic. Yeah. Uh, it depends on all the gigs, you know, that you do. There's, there's, There could be real money in comedy, but you yeah. really have to curate your own audience for that. You know, you have to get the people to now, come out to be seeing you to be able to make that money. Do you have, like, a traveling audience? Do you have people you see regularly at shows? I have people, like, I performed this week, Thursday, and the woman sitting up front her fifth show in, the, like, the last few months. She brings different people with her to see me, but she's at her fifth wow. show. <laughs> I have that. another guy who's going to be at his fifth <laughs> show the next Wednesday, Milford, Connecticut, it, and that's, like, within six weeks. That was my next question. Being that it's a woman, is that okay? If it's a man, do you consider it stalking? No, I think some people, I mean, some people just really, you know, I also do a lot of crowd work, mm-hmm. and I'm constantly writing, so they get the opportunity to see a new joke intertwined or... Com, you know, straight up improvising for, you know, 15 minutes I could riff in between. So people love that. People yeah. love to see you off the cuff. It just shows, like, an authenticity to you. And they're, like, being part of the experience right there as it is. So Watching I think a joke that's, being born. Yeah, I think people people enjoy that. Listen, it's would I, I don't know, I put myself in that position. Would I see somebody five times? I don't think so. But <laughs> It's a different vibe in each club though too. But I'm also a stand-up so I don't right. know, you know, I don't watch other stand-up comedians. No? No. I mean, well, not in comedy clubs like unless it's somebody opening for I've, me or I've heard a lot of comedians say that. They don't really watch yeah. stand-up outside of like being in the club already being there for a yeah. show of theirs. They don't really watch it or go see it unless it's a really close friend. Yeah, my friend's yeah. like, oh, let, let's go see this person. I'm like, I'm not going to a comedy show. That's work. <laughs> that's not, That's yeah. when people ask me, you want to go to the beach? I'm like, no, it smells like work. It's a, go. yeah, well, I mean, beach, toilet bowls, whatever. Yeah, smells well, like your job. I don't know. <laughs> I do a lot of regular yeah. diving, not oh, just do you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I do uh, heavy marine construction, so boats, piers, uh, dams. Uh, not real residential, more commercial grade. Um, if you've been on a pier in Manhattan, mm-hmm. chances of me have worked on it is pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Like we did... Uh, Pier 40, Pier 17, the Botanical Gardens in Chelsea the, Brooklyn. Pier. Chelsea oh, Piers I've worked on. Very cool. Yeah. So I don't like to do things that are like work. How does one get into diving? Uh, how I got into it, I was working for a company called International Tank Services. They they welded and manufactured storage tanks for jet fuel, kerosene, gasoline, mm-hmm, things like that. Mm-hmm. And I made a comment to my foreman. I was like, you know, for being so dangerous, you would think I get paid more. And he laughed and said, sweetheart, this isn't even top 10 of dangerous jobs. 
So I Googled world's most dangerous job. And it said underwater welding was in the top 10. And I always wanted to go to school to be an astronaut. So I was like, well, if I can't be an astronaut and I want to get paid more, be an aquanaut. I'll go dive. Mm -hmm. Similar thing. So then it's just a couple things in my life went together and I went to dive school. Wow. And here How I long am. is dive school? Uh, six months. Okay. And it's weird because you have a lot of guys that think, okay, I'm going to go to dive school and be a diver. Mm -hmm. uh, all they do is teach you how to blow bubbles safely. And Bubbles is very happy about it. Uh, they... Huh? Huh? Never mind. Oh, thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never mind. The, uh, but if you're not mechanically inclined prior to going there, mm -hmm. they're not going to make you a mechanic. Right. They're going to they're right, make you right. a safe diver. Right, safe diver. But to be a diver who's anything worth their salts, you got to have an understanding of the mechanical and the engineering aspects of how everything works, and mm -hmm. then you got to be able to do it blindfolded upside down. So don't really realize what it takes to like repair a bridge or mm -hmm. repair a dam or anything. You're working usually in zero visibility in New York Harbor. You can like, I can see this. You're in a current where you're sideways or upside down or you're under mud, or and then you have to have a firm understanding of how to complete your task. And it's one of those things where, yeah, it's cool. You can go to the bar and say I'm, a, I'm an underwater welder, but no one ever really sees your work. Mm -hmm. You have the most accomplished career. No one ever saw it. Mm -hmm. Just say, mm -hmm. hey, the bridge is still standing. You're welcome. Right. And I'm up there on the microphone in his ear saying, can you hurry up? Let's go. Yes, lunchtime. <laughs> you with him every dive? No, no. But, uh, oh. About 80% of the dives a lot of he's them, with yeah. me. Because we're a union. We're local okay. 1556. It's okay. uh, the New York City Dock Builders. So from there, uh, a lot of jobs you can pick your tender. Okay. So I, if he annoys me, I don't pick him. Let him go find A lot of job. comedians in this union. A lot, a lot of jokes. funny guys. And then... <laughs> Filming that was separate. That was just your thing. That was our thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got reached out by uh, a company called Anomaly, and then Anomaly worked for Discovery, and then we were supposed to be on uh, Discovery uh, Plus on the internet platform. Mm -hmm. And then it was like a week before we were supposed to air. They were like, yeah, oh, by the course. way, you're going straight to Discovery, 9 o'clock Sunday night after Dirty Jobs. And it was like a really big spot, and we're like, what, wait, what? That's very cool. And it, we, we had really, really good ratings, and it just, I mean, for that kind of show... Mm -hmm. It was impressive the level of ratings we got because mm -hmm. I don't really see myself outside of work going home and turning on guys jumping in shit. Mm -hmm. It's not really a. Well, I mean, I think people are interested in things they it's like they can't do or they yeah. would love to do or right. or just fascinated by oh, that. To me, what you described is a whole other world. Yes. Also, so then literally. We, yeah. Then we got into finding uh, the Joe Rogan bones. They call them mm -hmm. uh, on his podcast. They said a whole story about they dumped bones in the East River, like mammoth bones and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we went out and found those. And that uh, was a, a year in the making to do that. So that gave right. us a lot of traction with uh, social media and right. things like that. What, and we're so, still waiting for him to have us on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, Joe Rogan said he was going to have you on if you found something. Did, did you find something? Yeah, we oh, found yeah. three specimens. Oh, okay. And, my, and we have a gift for him. We're giving him one of the bones. not ringing. It's so weird. It's, <laughs> I'm not going to say he's full of shit, but I'm just saying I didn't get a call. Well, I, I believe that you will. I think eventually. I think so, yeah. It's meant to be. It happens. Busy man. So back to comedy. Back to I'm comedy. Back Fuck to about comedy. us. Yeah. I, I, am I doing the interview today? Yeah. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> that was weird. I'm Italian intrigued. women are like that. Yeah. Let I me met take my, over. my wife. My wife's aunt, and uh, she comes in the house, and first time I'm meeting her, she sit down. I sit down, and she hands me a plate of food. Mm -hmm. Well, JoJo. Naturally. Her JoJo, her uh, her stepmother hands the aunt the food, and the aunt hands it to me, and then they're like, and then she went off. I mean, must ask me 50 questions. Like, bang, 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 bang. I didn't get to answer any of them. Because she's answers. Mm hmm. Aunt Riri. I'm Hi, Aunt Riri. I always they, say Italian yeah. women would be the best detectives. Like, yeah, there'd be no unsolved mysteries if we were just yeah. the detectives. Yep. No, you around. need a pissed off Italian woman. It'd be like, do you? <laughs> where were you fumble. last night? I'll tell you where you were last night. This is night. what you were doing. <laughs> How does she know? <laughs> yeah. The uh, <laughs> Italian women. I can't get enough of them. The, uh, so back to comedy. You, uh, you've you been doing it for 12 years now. You're saying, mm -hmm. have you ever been heckled? Oh, yeah. I've had people try and go at me. And how do you handle that? They're not successful. Why is yeah, that? Good luck. Because I'm Italian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we just answered it. Uh, you know, I have to be honest, really heckled or like try to be like with ill intent. No, I've had people sometimes heckle me like, I love you. You know, so funny. It's like, okay, tell me after. Please the tell show. me more. <laughs> no, or tell me after. But uh, I do. So the, an article just came out about me and they were like, you know, she's a must see. You should definitely go see her, but just don't sit too close. And I guess that just is because I engage the fedora sometimes. guy. So I think a lot of the times, yeah, I engage with the audience, and then it creates something. But I would, I would say for the most part, I haven't really been like heckled. Too heckled. What's your biggest pet peeve about comedy? 
like doing stand up and performing live? Pet peeve? Like, is uh, there something that always bothers you that like happens if you could a lot? change something within the industry? I'd give the artist more power. You know, I think a lot of times we're bringing, you know, when you start bringing an audience, mm-hmm. you know, you want to start feeling more respected in the industry for doing that. And it takes time to build your bones where it's like, you know, you got to prove yourself constantly in this business. It's like you think you got to one level. Great. Now it's like keep climbing. The next because level. It's, so it's a constant climb, which like in anything. But it's I think the industry in comedy is not really made to, to make the artist, you know, hmm. arise right. the way they should. So is that a, a promoter thing? Is that a the club owner? It's a club owner. It's, you know, it's the business. It's business. You know, I love to answer it's business. I yeah. hate that. <laughs> but that's, They're that's, jerk-offs what they are. That's what they'll tell you. Yeah, you know, yeah. well, this is the business side, you know. But so so. being in 12 years of comedy, you've seen you've seen the progression of social media helping out uh, all your uh, oh, brand. So much. And you know what? I'll be real honest. I was so ignorant to it, I should say. Mm-hmm. I was of the mindset, like, I'm just going to do good work, be funny, write new jokes. But you need... We're in a world right now where... You're not grandfathered into anything. You need to curate your own audience and bring those people to shows. Absolutely. And the way to do that is social media. Unless you're on TV or unless, you know, you're in film, unless you have another platform, social media right here is the power. Now, do you have someone help you with that or do you do it on your own? I started on my own and I I used to have editors. I have, you know, a digital marketer now that I work with. But for the most part, it's all you. The audience wants you. They want yeah. your content. I have to write for it. I have to time code the, the stand up I want to show. I have to. It's a full time job. Absolutely. It's I a full time job. I want to get to the place where I'm like, here are all my sets. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> have fun with this. And I love your one video. It's uh, your, the question, uh, the words that you don't hear too often. That's my favorite one. But what's so crazy You're about great. this is you're not Italian. Nope. But okay, that video literally happened when I had no, a couple thousand followers. And I called somebody, a friend who told me her brother was really sick, dying, really. And uh, she had texted me, and I said, "Oh, I don't want to respond with a text to this. I'm going to pick up a phone and call yeah. her." She's, and she's like, used one. Of the, she goes, "Oh, he's such a skinny blink." And I was like, <laughs> "We don't, we don't hear that. I don't that that those words are going to like die with this generation." And so I got sentimental, and I picked the phone up. You know, words and phrases I heard growing up in my New York Italian neighborhood. Posted it. Nothing. You put so much work and effort into these videos that go nowhere. This was like a pure, just moment of nostalgia. My husband came home. I'm like, did you see that video I posted? He's like, yeah. I'm like, was it stupid? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> I go, <laughs> let great. me take it down. No. It was and great. before I knew it, it had like 300,000 views. I had was getting all these followers. And I was like, well, I posted, I'm not going to take that down. <laughs> I posted a video uh, a couple months ago. It has 1.8 million views. And it is the stupidest video on the planet. That's, I, I don't understand it. It's there's but no rhyme or reason. The anymore. words ones, you're the ones you were going off. I knew like ninety percent mm-hmm. of them. Well, you grew up here in New Jersey. Yeah, I grew up in North Jersey. I mean, ninety percent of my friends are Italian. I've mm-hmm. heard the grandmothers and the mm-hmm. no-nos, and they all. Mm-hmm. And, and uncle I used to drive for somebody back in the day. Our, the our grandfather and uncle were were friends <laughs> with people, mm-hmm. and they. Uh, how do, what, what's the word you want to use? Loan shark bookie? No, those aren't the ones. But they, they sound like that. They sound, yeah, sound, like, good. They sound like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they sound like that. My grandfather, when he passed away, I found his notebooks in the attic. We were cleaning out the house, mm-hmm. and he still owed like twenty-seven grand on the street. Oh, I'm like, I'm fucking collecting it. Oh yeah. And my mother took the books from me. <laughs> yeah. like, let it, Damn. let it, let it. Yeah, lie. it dies with yeah. him. I'm like, yeah. no, Pop owes owed money. Let's get it. Right. She wouldn't do it. That's an inheritance. <laughs> but uh, like, speak of the words though, my youngest son's nunzio, and my Witches. wife calls him uh, Scutcha Nuns. Yeah. So how do you say Scutcha? There's a real way to say it, but she calls she incorporates his name mm-hmm. and calls him a Scutcha mm-hmm. nuns. Yeah, we say Scutch. I say you're a Scutch. Oh, they're great. They're it's good. like Sopranos back in the day. That you should say a word and you hear it all week long at work or school so or anywhere else. So many people were saying that. I even did a thing on the street. I didn't even think of the Sopranos when I did it. I asked people how to say this word: W H O R E. Hua. 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 <laughs> yeah. Hua. And <laughs> and people were like. Tagging, you know. Uh, Artie Lang was my favorite. Who said on the, on the radio the shows? Show. A Huey. A Huey. Uh, <laughs> people were tagging, yeah. you know, so many Christopher Sopranos things. The best. And... No, it was Ralph. Ralph. She Ralph. was there. Oh, yeah. yeah. She was yeah, there when yeah, yeah. he kills the yeah. hooker Huey. outside the strip club. Stripper, not a hooker. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Stripper. Correction. There's a difference. Sorry. 
Okay. Trip, a hooker should if pay I get sex. canceled in this, wherever I am right this, now. The Bang Boss saying, podcast. Yeah, <laughs> then it was never meant to happen for me. The, uh, that was the, I love that episode. He, she was a hooker. Yeah. People were tagging him like crazy. Yeah, it's a great one. But, I love that. My favorite, well, Caddy Wampus has to be my favorite word of all time. And pe- people try to, to have you define Caddy Wampus. I'm like, it's very simple. The object goes this way, this way, and this way all at the same time. It's Caddy Wampus. And people are like, no, it's not. And they'll argue that mm-hmm. one word with me. I don't know that I'm savvy in Caddy Wampus. Caddy Wampus. He likes to use it a lot. I use it all the time. Okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, but how do you get the uh, you you post a lot? I mm-hmm. see you're you're often on. Mm-hmm. Do you ever find yourself like a lull where you're like, I don't want to post? Today. Yeah, I don't want to post, or I don't know what to post, or I don't like the video of the day. And but uh, you want to have you know communication. You want to have outreach with people, and yeah. you want to give them. They're following you for a reason. Some people will. I'll post something that I didn't feel like posting, and somebody's like, I needed that laugh today, and I'm like, fuck, like you know, like glad I did that, or you know, yeah, but. Social media is definitely. I really like how you engage. Mm-hmm. I've commented on a few of your things, mm-hmm. or liked, or reposted, and you're always right there to mm-hmm. comment I think back. It's important. And, People yeah. are giving you, you know, they're taking the time, mm-hmm. and right. I believe in engaging back. Like yeah, that is that. one thing, but that's really just because I'm really appreciative of it. Yeah. Do you uh, do you feel your social media prowess that you you have now has? Furthered your comedy, your comedy oh, career? without you get a doubt. More gigs? I could have ignored it all I wanted to, but the reality is I wasn't selling the tickets. And the majority of the people that come to see me will say, oh, I found you from the words. I yeah. didn't know you were, th- I didn't know what you were going to do. Like I had a whole cup, like a, a whole table come see me the other night, uh, you know, like eight people and they were like, oh my God, it was, it was so funny. Your stand up is so funny. We didn't know what to expect. And they go, what did you think you were coming to see? They go, we didn't know if you were just going to do the words on stage. Just words? And I was like, <laughs> and you bought premium tickets for that to hear me say <laughs> words. People will message me and be like, can you say this word? And I'm like, you just wrote it. Say, but I want to hear you say it. I want to hear you say it. You start an OnlyFans with yeah. just words. Oh, my just Italian You're words. Reading a dictionary. Heard, yeah, New York Italian, right. This is the next word. Right. <laughs> not a bad idea. It's actually, actually a great actually, idea. I'm like, uh, hold on a second. Yeah, do a uh, count, chalk, uh, the count. Just say words and letters all day. That's not bad. Mm. Not a bad gig. The, uh, what's your what's your next upcoming big event? What do you got going on? What do you got in the works? I'm just traveling this month. This is really the only few days I'm home. Um, um, you're here with us. I'm, in, I'm thank here you so with much. you guys. Wow, thank you. Uh, I'm in Maryland this month, L.A., Vegas. I'm doing Josh Wolf's uh, fabulous jamboree, whatever he does out in Vegas, a big wow. show out there at Jimmy Kimmel's. Um, and then I'm back home. I'm back in Naples, Florida. Do you do a lot in Florida? Uh, you know, this month I had and last month was my first real I would say breakout into Florida and I was incredibly grateful to those crowds I mean they came out on Tuesdays and Wednesdays to see me because I tried to like go people? across the the you know the state right is, is it older people in Florida coming to see you? I have older people that come the to snowbirds me, but, <laughs> and then you know my I have a lot of people from New York and New Jersey moved to Florida in the pandemic, oh, post-pandemic. Yeah. So a lot the of the people migration. are still my age or a few years older uh, that came out to see me. It's it's a different... Florida is not what it was. Yeah, Florida and Texas are huge comedy scenes Huge. Now, Austin, yeah. forget it. Is this your first time going to Vegas to do comedy? Mm-mm. You've been to Vegas before? Yeah, I've been to Vegas before. Good turnouts in Vegas? I feel like Vegas is a great spot to do comedy. Vegas is great. if It's a lot of people just visiting. Mm-hmm. So, so similar to life. like a New York scene where you have a lot of tourists. Like I did a show Sunday in the city. It was like who was from Finland, who was from Switzerland, who, you know, yeah, who was from out Central there. Jersey. You know, it's. <laughs> what was the one? Uh, I can't date her. She, I'm, yeah. I'm 98. She's 150. I can't. Yeah. I'm like, I've been there. I've, I've right. made that choice. Where I'm like, I'm not traveling to South Jersey. Oh, no. That was a real conversation. My friend was like, I can't date her. She's, you know, exit 152. That and I was Staten like, Island. I don't know what that means. No, I wouldn't travel Staten Island. Staten Island either. Oh, the Bronx. When Hello, I hun- Staten. Yeah. If somebody told me they were from Staten Island, like, if I liked a guy who was from Staten Island, I'd be like, well, you have to move to New York yeah. for me to date you. <laughs> well, he's in New York. <laughs> I know. I know. Exactly. <laughs> no, 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 no. Real New no, York. No, you have to come to like one of the four, bar- <laughs> the four boroughs. The, uh, are you still in the Bronx? I'm like eight minutes north of it. Yeah. It's nice. Not far. I asked our last uh, person we had up from the Bronx, how do you feel about Jenny from the Block? You know, she's getting a lot of heat right yeah, now. Yeah, what's your stance? You got a stance on that? Listen, I know where she grew up, and I know the neighborhood, and I know where she went to high school. No, By no stretch of the imagination was she in the hood. <laughs> That's what I keep hearing. That's the reality of it. All so right. I, But is she from the Bronx? Yes. Is she a Puerto Rican from the Bronx? Absolutely. You know, uh, 
does the Bronx culture have a lot of what she represents with the dancing or the attitude or the accent? Yes. Do I think some of the way she has portrayed, you know, what she was doing? I mean, I drank quarter waters. We all did. You know, right. it was it was the of the generation. It wasn't yeah. about being in the hood. She, you know, it's the way they're portraying it. I'm not saying. I, I do feel that if but she lived uh, such a high lifestyle for so long mm -hmm. of rich and fame and everything else that maybe she just remembering it differently because. She lived in luxury so long. Are you long. giving her a way out? Well, no, she's no, no, just no. acting. You know, she's but also doing this here. new, I think that was, I think they picked that up from her new documentary, whatever yeah. she's doing about this time it's really being in love, you know, as if it was. I didn't watch it. Yeah. Seven My wife watched before. It. Yeah, it I didn't see it. Yeah. He always looks miserable. Though. I did a video <laughs> that I thought was so brilliant about J-Lo. And again, proud Bronxite. You, you, my, people make fun of me. People say things. You're going to put yourself in the limelight. <clears throat> I did a video when she got was like started dating Ben Affleck again or whatever that I thought was brilliant. I did uh the J the J Lo Derby mm -hmm. and I I called the race with all the guys and put their heads on horses and like <laughs> made it remnants of like, you know, uh, you know, back back in the the day of you know, another Kentucky Derby and it went nowhere. Really? And it's like Is it still on there? Yeah, yeah, I'll show I, it I to you. It. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna share it because yeah. of, because of Selena's, she'll never do wrong to me. So, first of all, her movie, her yeah, the Selena, first yeah. movie. I always see that line from that movie. This bumper was ripped off with the tour bus of Selena's. That's right. I've never saw it. It's a great movie. Yeah, it's the, a great movie. Uh, <laughs> what a uh, what got you into comedy? I like was always fascinated. Really. With, from like, like a young, a young age? age, my 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 aunt told me like two years old, I'd be hitting the TV like wanting to watch the Johnny Carson show. Which, like, what did I even know at two years old? And like, I I knew there was something to it, and I would watch the Carol Burnett show as a kid because I lived with my grandparents, very Italian, mm. and that's what they would watch. Uh, I love Lucy, so maybe it wasn't necessarily stand up comedy, but I knew there was something to that physicality and that female being funny on TV yeah. that I was always drawn to. And then when I was really maybe like eight or nine, my friend, we stole the VHS tapes from his father's basement. Be of, careful stealing dad's tapes. <laughs> of, yeah, I know. Luckily, the only yeah. thing that was on it were Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, and George Carlin. And we... Pre or post heroin for Richard Pryor? Because he's know, funnier there, in different eras. There's, you know, at the time, back then, it was probably in the middle of all the chaos. Nice. It was pre-burn and yeah, pre good putting himself on fire and all those things. But I knew, I don't know if I was laughing because they were cursing. I don't know if I was laughing because of, you know, the way the audience was reacting. But I was locked in. And uh, I never think I thought about doing stand-up. I thought about acting and I did some improv and I did sketch comedy and you know off Broadway and then I really wanted to do stand up and I the show came out uh at Last Comic Standing. Mm -hmm. And the first year I was psyched for it. I couldn't wait to watch it. I watched the whole series. I loved it. And then the second year it came out, I kind of like was bothered by it. Why? And, and cuz I felt like oh, I just wish I would do it. Uh and that's not me. Like, I champion everybody who's doing what they want to do. Like, I always love seeing people live their dream, no matter what it is. And I, it bothered me that I wasn't, like, celebrating the people on TV because I was acting like a jealous little bitch. And Whoa. no, no. <laughs> uh, and I was like, I got to just, just try this. Okay. And did you so, try it out for last comic standing? No, I did. I was in a, at the time, I was in a sketch comedy show off Broadway, and I the producer and I were talking and he said, why don't you go warm up the crowd, do five minutes, write five minutes and do it. And so I started doing that. You weren't prepared. I wrote, I decided. Oh, you had I, some stuff. I wrote, I wrote the five minutes. Okay. No, I, ha I I wrote it for it. All right. I thought you went out there with nothing, just a microphone. No, 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 no. Can you imagine doing that? Nerve wracking. That's I always crazy. say I'm a writer before I'm anything. Yeah, yeah. Have you done any writing professionally, like shows or anything? I did uh, SMY, oh yeah. It was a, a sports network. New York, a sports New York show where we would, I was featured as a comedian. We would write funny things about sports topics. Mm. So I wrote for that. You ever cool. tried to pursue that further, or are you just sticking to the stand up? No, I'm sticking to stand up. I'm. I, I was doing. Uh, I was the in-house scoreboard host for the New York Yankees from stand up. They they found me at that show that I was warming up. 
So you worked for Yankees, mm -hmm. the Yankees. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You're one of Yankees jerseys. I, I don't. Hey, I don't. Yeah. So I was doing that play. Somebody had saw me, and they said, we need a host for Yankee Stadium. And I got the job from my first time practice, like, trying stand-up. That's a second second sports host in studio. Yeah, I know. But being you from the Bronx, are you a, a natural-born Mets fan? Well, the the Met, the Yankees are in the Bronx. Yeah, pal. Oh, well, the Mets are in Queens. That's right, Matt. But you're wearing a shirt in yeah. Boston, Red Sox lettering. So I it's don't know. not. It's no, a, it's no a I know, shirt. I know, I know. The uh, I'm sorry. So you're you're a Yankee fan out of the gate. So yeah, I was a New York fan. I love New. York. I love rooting anything for New York, whether it's the Mets, the Yankees, Giants, Jets, Knicks. Well, those are New Jersey teams. Okay, they are housed right here. And the I'm just okay. saying, just put it out there, Jersey teams. All right, I believe they're referred to as the New York Giants. I believe you're and correct. The New York Giants. Okay, just I was just. Uh, but uh, but again, that Bowl. could just be an uh, autocorrect. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know? Right. Yeah. And during the Super Bowl, they showed Lower Manhattan and not New Jersey. They did. I saw that. <laughs> did they? Yeah, they're, they're, they're like 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a kind of like Jersey either. I wouldn't name a team after us. We'll we'll the Devils. We'll see what devils. happens with the World Cup in two years. I'm excited for that. If they say it's New York hosting it or New Jersey, it's going to be New York. We'll see. Yeah. So you did the Yankee gig, mm -hmm. and then what happened from there? You just you, I really wanted to do stand up again. Like I, I had, I really had just, everything. Was I had just, I had stage. just done the few minutes here and there for that mm -hmm. one show, and I never really pursued it after that. And then about four or five years into working for the Yankees, I was like, "This is great. This was a great opportunity. It's not really what I wanted to do." So uh, I got up on stage. Where was your first show? I think it was at. Uh, whoa! Whoa! Slamming things over here. Yeah. This is why rubber band's broken. I didn't do that. You're full of shit. My Who's first show, me? I think, was Stand Up New York on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. You ever try sh uh, trying out for SNL? You know, I I ne I I would love to write. Uh, I mean, I did sketch comedy. It's not an avenue I'm like currently pursuing. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't be anti anything. It's but, SNL. But I answer it's, the phone if they call but, me. But you know, Florin Michaels was like, hey. <laughs> Come hang you out. You want a five yeah. foot one Italian? I'd be like, well, <laughs> you look every bit of five foot two. Um, that I appreciate. That. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, you definitely thought I was taller. I thought you were a lot taller. Mm -hmm. You got the car. I was like, people will see me on stage and then they meet me for the meet and greet, and they're like, I thought you were bigger. I'm like, I was standing right in front of you, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, I was up on the stage. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just suffer the bullshit. You'll yeah. find a compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're bigger. No, no your presence. Size. Your presence is big. Yeah, that's yes. good. And so is my mouth, which is wonderful. <laughs> and. Yeah, I don't need a microphone to be on right. stage. Yeah. <clears throat> I saw you did a podcast recently mm -hmm. with uh, Chaz. I, I host that with him. I co-host that with How him. How did yeah, you yeah. get that going? So about seven years ago now, I would say, I got an email that said he was coming to see me perform. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And uh, I was like, okay. And lo and behold, he showed up on like a good Friday in a strip mall in Yonkers at a club I was performing at. And there he was. And came then, and watched me. And they did the first podcast. He got up, locked the door, and said, now you can't leave. There you go. <laughs> now you're here. Now you just can't leave. <laughs> now you do the podcast right. forever. How often do you guys do that? Uh, come, we have, I mean, the the episodes come out every Monday. Okay. When I'm in town, I do them. And when you're on the road, he just, yeah, yeah. he continued out. He you? has, he, well, he, it was really his podcast. He had me on as a guest initially. Okay. Yeah. He had me on as a guest. Um, he had Catherine Narducci on as a guest. I saw that. And then uh, her, he called both of us and was like, let's do it together when we can. You know, the three of us. Well, because a lot of Italian vibe going on. Because we're really close in real life. We're yeah. all very good friends. And then we all three are very different. Even It's it's like New York Italian, but three different, completely different personas. So it just works. And when we riff on each other and things happen, they're happening, happening from a very genuine place. Yeah. He's such a cool guy. Like, he really like, is. Really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is the part of the podcast where I want to ask you what I ask everyone. Mm -hmm. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. Okay. The rules are very simple. It could be a scenario where you've witnessed, you have, that happened to you where someone told you a story where a dude wipe mm -hmm. would have benefited the person in the story. Okay. Well, now that I see them in my face, I'm going to buy them as a gift. <laughs> They're for great. the person that needs them. Okay. Um, my girl, I was in the car with one of my friends the other day, and she had cleaning supplies in her car, like paper towels and like a spray. And I was just like, uh, you know, do you want me to bring this in? We pulled up to her house. She goes, no, no, I leave that in the car. Uh, she's like, sometimes Joe will drink his coffee in the morning and go to the gym. 
And then like a few times he hasn't been able to hold it <laughs> and he has shit in the car. Wow, and shit in the car. I'm like, I'm like, he shit his pants? She's like, yeah, but he can't even like make it home. So like, and is so then I just want to clean <laughs> More than once. No. This is a regular character. This is, no, this is, a, this is a problem. in his 40s. He's, you know, drinks coffee and, you know. I drink coffee. I don't shit in the car. He shit in the car. She goes, so I just leave that there so I could just, he can clean it right away before. And I'm like. I have a couple questions. Okay. I should linger around the gym a little I, longer. I need to know <laughs> what kind of car it is. I'm trying to figure out if there's air-conditioned seats so it has those holes in the seats. It does have holes in the seats. Now I'm concerned about hygiene. Uh, me too. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, my question was, as the OCD Italian that I am, it's oh, yeah, like, pink eye. but what gets in that cushion? Yeah. Like, yes, maybe you can make it smell okay. But that it's still in there. But it's, it's. You're not, you're, it's in there. That's not coming out. No. No. That's too, okay. Uh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. He shits in the car, he, but more than he, once. I go, I go, this is a regular thing. She goes, no, 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 no. Once a month. She goes, don't, don't tell him. I don't tell anybody. I told well, you. you I'll me. just come to a podcast. <laughs> that's fine. Um, are we going to post this? Because yep, my totally friendship is definitely. It's funny. He only though. listens to one podcast in the world that happened to be ours. All right. <laughs> Could you imagine? And I'll be like, uh, I wasn't you, Joe. It was another a Joe. Different that, Joe a different Joe that I was in the car. Why, Joe? Do you have something to tell me? <laughs> anyway, uh, she said, no, it's happened just like two or three times. But I just, and I'm like. He needs a case of dude wipes in the truck. I'm like, there's. He needs a plastic seat cover like the old tiny woman couches on this. But all I'm thinking is if that happens while he's like, you need, you need a dude wipe, bro. They make the ones that are little, they go in the pocket individually wrapped. Yeah. So maybe for Christmas. If, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. those would be pretty clean. Those go on, on pleather. Dude, yeah. wipes, dude wipes should make a concert Acura diaper. Acura seats, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> name of the car. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Joe with the Acura. <laughs> I, I actually are. changed the car as I said it because I was like, arr, arr, arr. <laughs> but, I heard you say you're the OCD Italian. <sighs> Do you have to, you, are you, like, you have to clean a lot? Because my wife does that and um, she yells at me constantly because my clean is not me her too. clean. Mm -hmm. The other day she was yelling at me and I, she wasn't speaking to me. She was yelling at mm -hmm. me. Uh, the hands were going. She has a spray bottle and she's spraying. She's like, this isn't clean enough. I'm like, I wasn't born with that birth defect. I don't have that gene in my pool. Mm -hmm. I don't have to clean the fucking baseboard of the radiator before my mom comes over. Mm -hmm. My mom's not looking at him. Mm -hmm. Her mom is. No, it's. Do you have that same problem? It's really bad. Why? Where yeah. does it come from? And then I, I, I mean, I guess my, my Italian women are compulsively clean. It's like. That's what, uh, the house I grew up in. Like, there's jokes about how, you know, we'd have plastic on the furniture so yeah. you couldn't ruin it. Or, you know, we had a whole other house downstairs than you did upstairs because everything had to look a certain way. The so guest towels. Between environmentally being fucked up from that. And then can I... <laughs> and you then in my, in my jeans, you know, it must be... I like everything has to be a certain way. Like, I can't even sit down to write it unless my house is looking... But is it also way. soothing to you? It's like, it's like meditation it it almost? Feels, okay. It's, like, it's absolutely bizarre. Yeah. She cleans. She we have a little buffet in her kitchen. She, I watched her. I go, I need the rent check right now. She goes, yeah, I'll do it right now. She stops what she was doing, cleans the entire counter mm -hmm. off, then goes to the stove because the spray was out, mm -hmm. clean the stove, and then so the dishes were dirty, did the dishes, mm -hmm. then came back and wrote the check. Now it's like 45 minutes later. I'm like, what are you doing? I, feel oh, I need seen. a clean environment. I feel seen. <laughs> I feel seen. Yeah. The hell? But it is not just. I knew it. I knew a Italian woman from California, same way. I know mm -hmm. one from St. Louis, same way. New York, they're, they're all the mm -hmm. same in New York. East Coast, yeah. Yeah. What, what the hell is going on? It's that's amazing to me. You're all the same. <laughs> I mean, you're all the same, 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 but different. Yeah. But that one little trait. Yeah. Like I wouldn't sit there before again. My family came over for Easter and need to clean the globes. Oh no no time. no! My house has to look a certain way for company, and then yeah. the minute they're out, I have to, it has to be you got immediately clean. Redo shit again. The next yeah. day, I had twenty five people at my house for Easter. The next day, you wouldn't you wouldn't have even been able to know that anybody was. But then, will you complain that you're exhausted? Yeah, completely. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> That's so she part wanted of it. me to to steam clean the rug before Easter. We had people over for Easter, and she's like, "I need you to car do the the carpet in the living room." I go, "This makes no sense. We're having twenty people over, mm -hmm. fifteen kids. Mm -hmm. I'll do it after." So we enjoy the cleanliness mm -hmm. of the carpet. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. I had a steam Because clean. it's image. Yep. I'll, I'll clean up the hotel room before I leave it. 
So I'm not, not one make person. Them think, I'm not going to make them think I'm an animal. Unless your friend Joe's there, will shit in the bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Joe just shit all over the place, but no. She's the same way. She cleans. Up, she'll she'll fold the towels. Yeah, yeah. Yep, take all the floor. Fold I'll put them. all the garbage, like whatever garbage I had, in the garbage. I the one that I do a different hotel. I take my garbage a lot large. I mean, you you travel a lot. You're in hotels. Mm-hmm. I just had this conversation last week. I was a mess. I took the pizza boxes and stuff, and I brought them to the garbage can next to the ice machine by the elevator. Mm-hmm. And I bring them back. And I come back to the room. The guys I was with like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm right. not going to leave it in here. I'm not right. going to leave it outside the room. What if there's a fire? Right. you got to hug the walls. Yeah, right. it's a fire. It's a, it's a hazard. But I was always taught by a crazy Italian, mm-hmm. you put it by the big garbage can mm-hmm. by the ice machine. Any thoughts on that? I think it's right. Also, you don't want bugs in the room. Yeah, you don't bugs right. in the room. Absolutely. I think it's courteous. See? I think I'm crazy. You have good manners. Let that, me ask no, you a question. That. You mentioned the cleaning the rug. Are you allowed to walk in your house with shoes? No. Me no. neither. We have house shoes. Especially you. You you do some. I take my boots off. Mm-hmm. I heard, a, this was years ago, I heard a story about a guy who was a uh, New York City dock builder. And he lived long enough to see his wife and kids die. So he was working ground zero. And he was doing the cleanup effort at ground zero. And he was coming home every day, hugging his kids, picking them up, putting them in his truck, bringing the baseball, all that. Uh, he brought asbestos fibers home with him. And he lived long enough to watch his two children, his wife, all succumb to mesothelioma. And then he died. And after I heard that story, I was just getting into the business. And after I heard that story, I just go up to work. I get to work in sweatpants. Mm-hmm. Right? I'll, I'll go to work in sweatpants, Crocs, mm-hmm. whatever. I change. Mm-hmm. And I'm done working. I'll close off. And I go. I don't bring that cross contamination to the house. Absolutely. Yeah. So my boots don't come in the house. We have, uh, I have uh, house Crocs, mm-hmm. which I can't believe I'm saying that out loud. It's okay. My husband has them. I, I have house slippers. <laughs> yeah, I have house Crocs. But uh, but it's weird because I can't wear the house Crocs to get the garbage out. Right. So now I have dudes in the staircase to take the garbage out. Because my sole job is to take the garbage out. And I've noticed if you're married to an Italian woman, she won't take it out. She'll stack it as high as she can. So two things about what you, first of all, the shoes in the house was a big debate we had on our podcast. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not about, because I think, you know, somebody joke like, uh, it takes the cool right out of you or something when you have to like be in someone's house with like a whole outfit on and just your socks or whatever. But it was, it was about like what you're bringing into that house, like the public bathroom, regular shit. That was on Sopranos, the laces. That is all over your, like. Mm-hmm. So for Easter, I I take the rugs up. I'm like, I'm not going to make 25 people take their shoes off, but they're not going to be stepping on my rugs with their sneakers. That's right. And then my floors get cleaned immediately after they leave. Yeah, Fallon does that. She cleans them before you get there, and then she cleans them after, yeah. and then she puts the babies in Potomac Bay. The, the, oh, especially yeah. if you have kids. You want kids crawling on the floor. People have... So that was a big thing, and and believe it or not, I was not popular on the podcast with Catherine and Chaz when I was the only one who said you take your shoes off in a house. But when I posted that clip, yeah, you take them off. So many people, and with you telling that story, I mean, come on, it's just. My we recently I was leaving the house, and we give three kisses before we leave. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. we're fighting, we still mm-hmm. kiss. You can tell we're fighting because they're like mm-hmm, real they're quick. quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fuck you. But we're saying it through our kisses. So she's like, I'm not going to say goodbye to me. We're beefing. Mm-hmm. By us beefing, I mean she was yelling at me for some bullshit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I had my shoes on. I'm already dressed. And she's in the living room. And that was like a standoff. Mm-hmm. She knew what she was doing. Because she's on the couch. She's laying there. And she's looking at me. She's going to say goodbye. I'm at the doorway. Uh... I look down at my shoes. I look back at her. She's not wearing shoes. Motherfucker. Take the shoes off. I go all over the light. Baby. Kiss her goodbye, then come back and put my. I'm, I'm not skinny. I'm not felt. I might get a little winded tying the laces, so I'm like, fucking shoes. I put the shoes back on, and she, she it was a, it was a struggle. It was a power struggle. That was. It was a flex. Yeah, it was a flex. Yeah. And let me tell you, you did the right thing. Because if I walk through with the shoes on, it'd you, be a whole other argument. There was no kiss. How you? Yeah. This is what you do. This is what you do. You bring that. Yeah, it would have been a whole other fight. Yeah, you're gonna kill the kids. Separate How dare fight. you? Yeah. Yep. You don't care. You have no consideration. She does that. I when can we're... tell you what would. What yeah, I know what she's doing. If you, yeah, especially yeah. if we're arguing, if we're arguing about something, I know if she's pissed. Because she will go to the furthest room in the house when she's not about to leave to see if I'll come say goodbye. Like, what are you doing on the roof? Mm-hmm. Chestnut checkers. <laughs> what are you doing on the roof? Are you, you going to say goodbye to me? I'm cleaning the chimney for you. Right. Chestnut checkers. The other thing you yeah. said, the second thing was your only job is to throw out the garbage. Yeah. So I 
did a video. Like, again, you put all this work into these videos that J-Lo Derby went nowhere. My husband announced he was throwing out the garbage in my house. He's like, I'm throwing out the garbage. And I'm like, I've done that. Did you just announce the one fucking thing you do in this household? So I said, get your camera out and record me. And I rec- I screamed every single thing I did all damn day in that house. And I posted it and it got 35 million views. Did you uh, across <laughs> did platforms. you smack the bay balls into the sink? I clean across these fucking things too. Platforms. People went insane. The video took all it's of so real. It was why, one, it was yeah. the most basic. It's like I'm doing the dishes, I'm cutting the you know, cooking dinner, I'm, you know, filling out your mother's birthday card, I'm whatever. People went crazy. And if you got into a New York City taxi in the month of June, it was playing in the New York City. New Yorkers called me. They were like, Can we put this video in New York City taxis? Because it's so (laughs) relatable. To me, it's like I have written what I believe is so much smarter material goes nowhere and then you you just do a video where your husband throws out the garbage and it's like people will go over to him and be like are you the guy that throws out the garbage do you stack the garbage <laughs> up uh, I, le- I i stack it and then i leave the thing open because it's in the cabinet so that he knows he has to take she opens it out the lid. that's a calling card yeah. she mm-hmm. opens the lid she pulls the bag out so mm-hmm. you can fit more shit mm-hmm. in it yeah me too and then leaves and then the strings on tied. Uh-huh, me too. Doesn't tie it. You yeah. know you're there already. Yeah. Phil, fucking no, no, tie no, no, no. no, no. She stacks them up. And then my favorite one she does, she'll open oh, on a second floor. Mm-hmm. So she opens the door. Okay. And there's a 5,000 stairs that go downstairs. Mm-hmm. She would then kick all the cardboard boxes down the steps, close the door, and let me figure it out. Mm-hmm. Figure it out. Yep. Me too. My it's husband, a fire hazard. My husband could hardly walk in the door that day, but all the boxes there. I'm like, it's just, it's just happened in my house. I tripped over a Lay's box. We have five kids, and she makes the lunches. You know how I know she makes them? She tells me. Right. <laughs> and uh, so it's a Lay's box from Costco. It's like the big yellow box. So I come walking, and I trip over it. And I couldn't say anything. Because my one job is to the garbage It's to take the garbage out. <laughs> Plus, I tripped over a bright yellow box. I'm like an asshole. The other thing that'll make me mental is if he throws out the garbage and then I go to throw something out and there's no bag? not Whoa. another bag in there. No. That's it's war on. Yeah. It is. It, there is a war going on in my house. Yeah, we have the diaper pin. And mm-hmm. how she likes it done is you tie the bag up, mm-hmm. take the bag out with all the diapers. Mm-hmm. Then you take the Lysol. You spray the Me can. Too. That's and yeah. then you got a paper towel. I clean it. Yep. And then she does the lid. Yep. Does that. Mm-hmm. Then she puts a new bag in. Mm, yep. Closes it. Then gets the stainless steel cleaner. Sprays the lid. Wipes it so there's no screaking right. marks or anything. Uh-huh. The lysol. Oh God forbid. And then that can is now done. Yep. Okay. That's the proper way to do it. I, I know that it. he's not going to clean. <laughs> I know he's not going to clean the thing. So the next time I grab the garbage, I will clean it. But when he hasn't cleaned it and there's no bag. No. Yeah, no. I learned. I so I, I I didn't spray it. There will be blood. I didn't yeah. spray it, and uh, I'm laying on the couch, and I'm watching. She doesn't like sci-fi. She mm-hmm. hates sci-fi. Me too. So I watch sci-fi, it, and she gets I, mad. Am I related? Mm. <laughs> all tiny. The women are the same. <laughs> She's tiny too. It makes no sense. She she comes in. I'm watching the show. She's like, "What are you watching? Your sci-fi bullshit." <laughs> I was like, "Wow! First of all, this is heavily rated on the Sci-Fi Network. How dare you?" And uh, she threw, she takes the uh, the garbage bag. This was premeditated. The garbage bag was tied around the Lysol, okay? So you could throw both. Ties it around it, then takes the tail, puts it in the lid, so there's no chance of it coming off, and then throws it at my chest. I mean, not like a, right. a, a yeah, full yeah. fast pitch, uh-huh. but got my attention. Mm-hmm. And she goes, the diaper, the, the, the diaper pail's full, and make sure you spray it this time. I'm like, how do you know I didn't spray it last time? He knows. Are you weighing the can? You know we what know. I took out of it? We know. I didn't spray it. We know. She knew. Yeah. It just doesn't look right. No, yeah. it doesn't. There's <laughs> a The odor is different because it wasn't cleaned the first time in between. Yep, that's what it was. She walked by it. Yep. And she goes, that reeks. I'm yep. like, it smells like shit because it's full of shit. No. She goes, you didn't spray it. You didn't spray. Yeah. And then we have the There's lemon one for that can, right? Mm-hmm. And the lavender one the lavender is one, in the kitchen. The bomb Lysol, yeah. Yeah. And then she decorated our entire house, our entire kitchen with lemons. Right, all lemon themed. Mm-hmm. So now I always say, when life gives you lemons, decorate your kitchen. Right, there I say you it have. constantly. She didn't find it funny the first time I said it. She yeah. sure as fuck didn't find it funny the seventh time the time. I still haven't found it. Yeah, funny. no, it's not funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter now says it. My eight year old uh, says uh-oh. it constantly. Now there's like this big riff in the kitchen. And we're all in there. She's like, get it out now. I'm like, it's kind of fun. No, it's not. I like to pick on her. 
Yeah. I'm going to go home and not take the garbage out tonight. Yeah. Her least favorite child is her mother in law. Yeah, she yeah, says yeah. Well, well, clearly, I'm not married to an Italian woman, so I'm yeah, just, just, just getting this game. You're just, right. You're just enjoying the yeah. conversation. My wife's half Moroccan, half Colombian. Okay. Sweetheart She's of a woman. Very oh, really? easy to get along Sweetheart. with. Well, I, I, she doesn't have to ask me to take the right. garbage She'll out. She'll slit his throat if he looks at another woman. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, No, she no. points him out. No, not even. Points him out. Like the coolest person in the whole world. Wow. Yeah. That's not Sarah Second wife, though. Yeah. Second wife. Okay. The first one was Italian. Okay. My, uh, <laughs> I like my wife last. knows who's Ten on my years. Instagram. Three kids. She'll tell me if it's yeah. a new follower or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You could put a gun to my head right now and ask me how many followers she has or what she put. Mm-hmm. I couldn't fucking tell you. I'll no be idea. like, why did you like this post? I'll yep. ask my husband why what he likes something. <laughs> what did you like? Why'd you like that? Do you do this with no phone? Uh, no yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. Why'd you do? Why'd you what, like it? What, what'd you like it? What are you like, liking it for? What are you liking? Your phone? What are you clicking like for? What are you clicking? <laughs> what are you clicking like for? That's uh, she, she. So she's yelling at me the one day about because when the show first came out, I got a lot of Midwestern attention. Mm-hmm. I can see that. I, yeah. I can feel that. A lot of Midwestern attention. Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of DMs. Yeah, yeah. About things like this. And I would laugh and just move on with right. it. Right. And um, she, she, so she's yelling at me the one day about followers that I follow back. And I'm like, what? And she's, yeah, then she's yelling at me about it. And I looked at her. I go, do you think Hallie uh, Bieber gives Bieber shit like this about who he follows? She goes, absolutely. Yeah, anybody. Like, she was so <laughs> positive. I'm like, did you talk to her? How do you know? But yeah, you don't follow this one. You don't. Why the fuck is she liking your stuff? I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know her. <laughs> I don't even met her. She lives in Greece. <laughs> Because it's just a different culture now. Me- meanwhile, my husband, will, I'll, he'll crack up. Like the other day, I posted something, and somebody goes, uh, "Oh my god!" A guy goes, "Oh my god, I love you." And then another guy writes underneath it, "You know, get in line, pal. We'll wait for a divorce out here." <laughs> and like, if somebody would have written that to him, I would have been like, what? "Block this person," or you know, I'm gonna hunt her down. Yeah, yeah. she uh, she has followed women that have followed me. Mm. And I'm like, and I, we were doing something a couple weeks ago, and I, we were trying to find somebody, and I click on mutual friends. I'm like, how do you know so-and-so? She goes, I don't. How do you know him? I'm like, I don't. Just, they follow me. She goes, yeah, they follow me too. <laughs> that was her only answer back. I'm like, I feel like this is like a shakedown. <laughs> Why are you looking? Put the knife down. You're, you're, calm yeah. down. And she's so tiny that when she yells at me, I, help, I, have, to, I have to laugh. I'm not nervous. I'm, I'm not afraid of her. Mm-hmm. But she just... She, it's a little yeah. mighty mouse. I'm like, yeah, well, calm no. down. Yeah, I am. I'm scary. Are you? Do you yeah. rage clean? Do you slam the cabinets? Oh, I mean, whatever I can use to make noise. Yeah. <laughs> What's that about? I'm here. Closet doors. <laughs> forget it. Why is that? Mm-hmm. I put the uh, on the pantry. I took off the uh, the little catch, and oh. I put a little little stopper on the top. She can't slam it anymore. <laughs> Success. Till she watches this podcast episode. I don't think she listens to my podcast. Probably not. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure. Yeah, she's not. Um, when we first the show, first show came out, she, uh, my whole family came over the house. It was the debut of, of Sewer Divers, and ever we ordered pizza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love and it. I, I was butthurt about it because we didn't order where I wanted to order from, mm-hmm. and we're in my house watching, watching a your show, show. I'm yeah, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I can't pick the fucking pizza. Uh-huh. My mom got to pick the location, which still Listen. a little because she also is on one episode. So and she, also, would you be here? If we, uh, she got if a pizza, she didn't, whatever. Right. <laughs> she so got I'm here because my father's persistent. That's why I'm here. Man's like, hey, I want to. My right. father always said growing up to my mom, you want to earn a dollar the hard way. I was planned. He wasn't. Okay. Where, yeah, I, I got through uh, <laughs> Minoxol 9, spermicidal lube, and I got through a condom. Look at that. Success. I mean, you were a swimmer from the start. That's it. Just hitting the, hitting you the were a diver from day one. Get in. And always a pain in everyone's ass. So we, we watch <laughs> the show, and everyone's there, and it's like a lot of hectic going. Everyone's talking over each of other course, very loud. yeah, yeah. And uh, so everyone leaves, and they're re-airing the show at 10 o'clock on a rerun. You want to watch it on your so own? So I want to watch quietly. it now and see yeah, it. Yeah. And she goes, real stars don't watch themselves. It's bedtime. And that resonated so loud that I don't even watch my own podcast. I have never seen a single episode of anything I've ever been on. I, I, watching my own stand up is like putting needles in my eyes. Why? I don't want to watch it. And I, I think I really don't want to watch it. I watch the podcast episodes and I clip them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 30 second hits? <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't bother me. But <sighs> watching myself or anything I've done, even when I'm on TV, when I did SMY. I would watch it and be like, oh, just get me off and go but to the next one. That person. doesn't help you with like really? notes and like figuring things out. Oh, for next yeah, time. amazing. Uh, but it, it, it I hurts. do it. Yeah. It's just, it's painful. I don't do it. Yeah. She belittles me. No, I would do it for a stand up. I have to listen to my sets, know where I did well, know what I liked about a joke. Sometimes I say something, I don't even realize where I got the laugh. 
So I got to go back and be like, oh, that wasn't planned. I said this and that got a laugh. So now I got to start saying that, you know? So Just it's like, like words. Yeah, yeah. So when you write your jokes, do you write them for where you're doing the show? I will cater to an yeah, audience, audience yeah. or, you know, whether I'm traveling or when I was, I'll never forget, I had to open up for the Righteous Brothers. Uh, and it's like, uh, you know, the audience was there for, you know, they're, they're the, the mean age is like 30 years, my senior, l- l- watching like these people sing like oldies really. Right. And like here I am as like now I got to perform 25 minutes of comedy for people that. So I will write, I will cater to that audience. I will write about who I'm opening for. I will, I took lyrics and made them punchlines. Like I tried to really give those people what I felt they deserved. Did you get a good, it's re- not about, good yeah, feedback? It was, yeah. Hey, I got booked. Great job. Great I got booked. Uh, I mean, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful experience for me to be on the road with guys like that. That's awesome. Speak of the devil, she's ordering pizza. Hmm. Was that going to be your from lunch? Your, yeah, from your place? <laughs> no, it's not going to be my place. No. Now. I like... Um, Can we say what's your place? Pizza Land. Okay. It's on Route 7's on the... Oh, is that with Sopranos, the Sopranos? Yeah. Yep. Is that the... That was yeah. all of my siblings' first jobs. We all grew up right around the we corner We all grew up right it. there, and we all were first jobs where they're, they're making boxes, my delivering, making pizzas. And my uncles started going there since they opened in 1965. And the original owner... Uh, Freddie? Freddie, yeah. Freddie, Freddie used to host card games and shit there. And my grandfather and him were like this. So we get to go in there and give us plates of cheese and pizza and shit. So when his son Tony took over, after Freddie uh, passed away, Tony gave all of us jobs. Like I was 14 or 13. Started up cutting cheese, making boxes, and then one day delivering, and then one day making, making pizzas. Making the pizzas. So like all, that, yeah. all my siblings' first jobs was Pizza Land. And... Is it like a little house? Is that like it's an individual little... It's so little tiny, yeah. yeah it's a yeah. hole in the wall. But it's like on its own. I remember in the... Yeah, in the it's it wasn't building. attached to anything, No, it's right? one it's little, like, yeah. Freestanding and uh, how, how far is Pizza Land from here? From right here, uh, four you, minutes. Well, okay, four or five so, minutes. Wait, yeah. three so minutes. I've if I drive. This is I probably shouldn't admit this. Maybe we'll take it out. I don't. I'm not. I don't like pizza. What? Okay. It's unique though. It's it's not like it's a pizza you've never had before. I may, maybe no, I should no, go she's if had it's it that like close. That, yeah. it's that should close. I get I should, pizza at from minimum, Pizza Land today? Stop there in your video. I think at it minimum, should happen. Yeah. Delicious. Maybe I'll go. It's in. littered with Soprano I'll stuff it. on the yeah, walls yeah, yeah. inside. Maybe I'll just go back. Now, being nice. very a cleanliness person, you're gonna be like, when you walk inside, you'll be like, "What the fuck's going on in here?" Yeah, you will. It's you're gonna say, "How the fuck do they have a certificate of occupancy?" Oh well, maybe I won't be going there. You, no, you'll be you fine. should go there yeah. just to like take see a pack it. of dude wipes. <laughs> <laughs> But we've never had any issue. Never had food poisoning from there. Never had any, no close calls. Hold no on, hold on. I would imagine people go to Pizza Land just because they saw it in this. I imagine yeah. their business. Yeah. You have your now lo- it is. locals. Now it is. Who's been there forever. And then your lot of travelers. Can I ask what your wife's favorite pizza is? Uh, what's so that in that place? Josie's over in Lynnhurst. She likes that place. I which love I tolerate that place because I like, I love their penny and vodka. Okay. I, I think it's, I get called, um, her parents call me a, a marigan. Oh, many gone. That's it. And yeah. I always say to them, I'm not that because I'm not Italian now Americanized. Right. That, so it right. doesn't apply to me. Right. And they're like, no, it does. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It's a big argument at dinner. Well, right. So mostly if like, mostly that's referred to like when I did the, the, Italian, the New York Italian words and phrases, many gone was one of them, but people were like, that's you, you, you know, you, but that's where my, that's where I grew up hearing that was New York Italians. It was of second, third generations. That's what people would speak. But sometimes we go, oh, look at these many guns when it's just white people. Uh, I don't mean, okay, that's very, like, I know that I'm technically <laughs> Caucasian. Yeah, but they eth- said they had the exact same sentence, but I've I'm heard it. But I'm ethnic. Yes. And <laughs> ethnic women are very different than white women. Like, Ita- I'm Italian. Like, we can't I wouldn't say I'm Olive white. Garden. They go, but people go, what are you? I'm like, I'm Italian. Like, if where's the box for that on my application? Not right. here. The uh, they, they refuse to eat at certain pizza places, and they refuse to eat Olive Garden and and that's no you, but you guys would you would. I would never go to Olive Garden either. I've never been there. Yeah. Okay. We grew up. My my mom's mom. She when she first moved to Newark from Pennsylvania, I forget the name of the Italian family. Newark instead of Newark. Newark. Yeah. Newark. Yeah. 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 Newark. And so she got taught at her first apartment. She got taught by the woman downstairs who owned this uh, delicatessen. Oh, I want to know her name. I, and now it's a it was a famous brand that's on the market. But I forget the name of it now. But does anyone mind if I make a phone call during a podcast? You the mother, the it. mother taught her how to cook, okay. Italian and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So we grew up eating that type of food because she knew how to cook it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she so, was taught by this. I gotta call my yeah, mom. You gotta, you gotta ask her the, the name I of my family. This. I'm gonna find a phone a friend. My, my mother's my phone a friend. Yeah, it's good. Plus, we're in North Jersey. You got all right. the great restaurants I mean, and pizzerias. Yeah. 
Hey, Ma. Can you hear me? Put on speaker. All right, hold on. I'm on, I'm on the podcast right now. I'm putting on speakerphone. I have terror jokes here. Who <laughs> was the woman that taught Graham how to make sauce in Nork? He had a couple. Tano from Tano oh. Brothers. Yeah, that's Tano what Tano about. Brothers, yeah. And then she had Old Mary, and I don't know her last mm-hmm. name, and she had Helen Ferrara, how to cook. They all taught her how to cook Italian. All right, thank you. That's all I needed. That's it. All right, bye-bye. So this woman no, was yeah, she lived Tana across the, the apartments. Yeah. She mm-hmm. lived right across the mm-hmm. way from her. And my grandfather was doing dumb shit and her husband was doing dumb shit. So they're always hanging out. So the wife's hung out and then she taught my grandmother came I from Pennsylvania that. from like the sticks. Like okay. hillbilly. Uh-huh. Seventeen sticks. years old, baby, like got on a bus from Pennsylvania and took it and surprised our grandfather because he got a job at a chemical place in and North. He had, all he had was a a little thin mattress on the floor with one lamp in the apartment. Told her everything was great. And so she he, came over. He and went to get everything established. And then she was going to come down with her oldest son, or Uncle Paul, when when, it, when he was all set up. Mm-hmm. Two months go by. He She's getting impatient. She gets on the next bus and goes out here. She comes with nothing. So these older women in the apartment complex. You can't have that with a baby. Yeah, and, and they her taught her how to cook. Yeah. And so do you call it sauce or gravy? Oh, I knew that was going to mm. be the question. I th- I hate the debate. If you're from North Jersey or New York, a lot of people say gravy. That's, to me, it was like this marinara sauce, like there's a yeah. sauce you can make, but when you put meat in it, we call it a gravy. Yeah. Fallon's house the same way. It's, just, it's a divided house until meat gets put in it. It's meat. Yeah. But it's... there's meat in it. Like I'll say I'm making a Sunday gravy. So that's where she, she learned all of these techniques from the older women she mm-hmm. hung out with. Mm-hmm. And so that's how my mom was taught my aunt. And it, mm-hmm. So we're never Italian. But if you came to our Sunday dinner, you'd be like, what are you doing here? Mm, yeah, you, you, <laughs> you have, you guys have, a, maybe it's the Jersey, North Jersey thing yeah. about yeah. you. But you do have, like, I would, if you told me you were, I'd believe it. I am. Well, I mean. Maybe <laughs> too, late, too late, too late, too late. Maybe him more, I don't know why. I get that all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's because you're, uh, I got the Italian sick. Joey too, Diaz right? gets that all the time. Yeah, Portly, yeah, we were supposed to have Joey Diaz on as our first guest. He's in Jersey. Yeah. He's yeah. Local. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, he was going to come on. <laughs> we just, he was our first guest, premiere of the podcast with Joey Diaz. And, uh, yeah. He's, re- he's related to a friend of ours. Oh. N- it never came, and I felt so butthurt about it for so long. Don't. But, it's, and we had Frankie we're Agger. artists. Yeah. None of us are. No, but yeah, Frankie yeah, yeah. Agger comes out, Roger mm-hmm. Matthews, mm-hmm. and they're sitting here, and they're telling us that he called on a... F- he was supposed to do their podcast. I'm five minutes away. I'm five <laughs> minutes away. Never heard from him again. <laughs> They, they eventually, away. I think, did they have mine eventually? No, they didn't have mine. But, no, like, yeah. yeah. But what are you going to do? That's great. I'm I'm I right down you. the road. Yeah. Never see you again. I love it. Joey's a good check in guy. I love that he's doing a podcast now in college because he will call. Like, yeah. that's what makes him different than it. I'll get text messages from other comics. Mm-hmm. He will call me and be like, what's up, T? What's going on? I what are you a phone doing? Call. He's, he's the call. He's the check in. I've listened to guy. everything he's ever done. Yeah. He's, the, he's truly a, uh, one mm-hmm. of the best. Do you have that old school mentality with the phone call over the text? I'm little, the, I am a very New York, I'm modern, but yeah. I, there are certain things. Like, that's when my girlfriend texted me her brother was dying. I was like, I'm not going to call. I'm not going to text yeah. her. I'm going to call her. You know, and that's what made me famous. On the, on the way <laughs> home from work. That old school mentality. Yeah. The way home from work, you do your, like, 15 phone calls to people. I that's love those. When I'm in the I car, I'm like, let me get everybody out now. If <laughs> I haven't left my house, you haven't heard from me. <laughs> yep. Right, yeah. I do all my calls on the way home. And then, like, I'll get a text saying, hey, you got a minute? I'm like, I got 37 minutes left. Right. Better make it fucking you'll count. Get a, right. You'll get a lot of, bam, move your car, asshole. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, but sorry. I'm, but sorry I'm going to talk that. to you. Yeah. yeah it's, I enjoy it. I enjoy the, I used to listen to the radio and not call anybody. But then I get home. Me too. I, all I do is talk to everyone on the phone. Me too. And nowadays, I can't go home and talk on the phone. One, no. and, yeah. Uh, yeah. You have five kids. <laughs> okay, yeah. And an Italian wife. So <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. There, you, cut, there we yeah. go. I just I'm, gave you six reasons why you can't talk on the phone. Do you do this to your husband? You'll be on your phone, right? You're on mm-hmm. your phone. You're doing your thing, whatever mm-hmm. that may be, right? He's on his phone doing his thing. You put but your I phone can down. can still hear what he's saying? No, 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 no. Oh. You put your phone down. You're done. You're like, set my email. But now I want you to be off and your phone. And then go, why the fuck are you on why, your phone? Why are you still on your phone? This is our time. Get yep, off your phone. Get off your phone. Do you do yeah. that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah. I was able to actually <laughs> yeah. finish that sentence for you. Why, why do you Why do you do that? What's that about? I can't Now it's wife. our time. But, well, here's my thing. For me, I work on this phone. I use that excuse too. So this is my job, right? <laughs> the right. engaging, the this, the that. But when I'm done, you're, I'm giving you my time now. You take my time now. What does he do for a living? 
he does public insurance adjusting. Like he's a project. Like uh, he also has a uh, a surf pro for like mitigation, like fire if your house goes through stuff. He's I could have used him last year. A cleanup company. Yeah, nice. yeah. Their apartment burned down. Yeah, no, Terrible. it's and he's like works on your side against your insurance company, so you get all your like as much oh, money nice. as you're supposed to get. Nice. But like it's like two opposite ends of the spectrum. Completely, he very thinks serious, he's a comedian. Professional. He thinks he's a comedian, though. <laughs> but not taking the garbage. He thinks I think he's, he's funny. funny. You know, I he make just... my clients laugh all the time. No, okay, no, sure. He does. Like people <laughs> will come to shows now. They're like, I want to meet Mike. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> Mike ain't Mike's shit. Mike didn't write my jokes. <laughs> Mike can probably take the garbage out. Right. You talk jokes here. People do take pictures with him from that video. Really? Mm-hmm. You never know what's going to Plus, I put him on, uh, in certain videos. People love, like, the car videos. Or I rant on him and things like that. But, yeah, yeah. People people feel like they're on the inside. And that's... I love that. Do we have uh, any uh, any show you want to plug before we wind this down? Uh, yeah, where's your next show? I, well, I'm in Maryland this weekend. Can't McGoobies. make that. Well, okay. Is there some uh, I can come to? I'm the, I'm in Milford, Connecticut, Wednesday, April seventeenth. Then I'm in LA, guys, April eighteenth through the twentieth. I'm in Vegas, the twenty second, twenty third. I'm in Naples, Florida, the twenty fifth through the twenty ninth. I'm in Parks Casino, Pennsylvania, May second. Wow, D- does your um, husband travel with you? He's gonna meet me in Vegas. Oh wait, why wouldn't he? Yeah, right. <laughs> right yeah, yeah. I'll call. I can make time for the Vegas one. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually in Vegas. LA about a week a month right now. Really? I'm going out. So every one week month. a month, you're out, you're in LA yeah. hitting mm-hmm. up the uh, West Coast crowd. Yeah. Do you find a different, I know I gotta wind this down, but I gotta know this. Like, you have your East Coast crowd, you're an East Coast girl, mm-hmm. you know, New York native. Do you find the crowd to be substantially different? Yes. What, yeah? Mm-hmm. I find the comics to be different, too. What's your favorite club so far you've performed at? Uh, I, pref- I mean, the club that made me was Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant, oh, yeah. New Jersey. Uh, When's the next time you're going there? July. I'll go to that one. Yeah, July. Think it's still available? Yeah, yeah. All right. July. It's, I'm... I'm I've, I've, there's a lot of things I've tried to get to go to recently, like and then in the uh, two seconds everything sold out. I'm like, like Danny DeVito is doing a, a thing in Jersey thing. where he's mm-hmm. reading off the script of uh, uh, what the hell is it, Matilda? Maybe. And I went to buy tickets for my daughter and me to go. They literally said it on the radio. Pick a phone, sold out. I think a lot of people just buy it to resell it. So. Oh, uh, I hate that. Yeah. You know, Joey had a problem with that with Sony Hall. I opened for Joey at Sony Hall. I mean, a lot of comics have problems with that, but yeah. I just remember him. Like, it's tickets. He, Joey doesn't want to overcharge his audience. He wants mm-hmm. people to come. He never, he's just really about his audience. And somebody bought all the tickets, you know, these third party places. It was $1,000 a seat to see him. And people are going to pay. Yeah, they are. Jesus. To see Joey, you know? Hey, if you, if you talk to uh, Joey recently, just. I will. I'll give Dirty <laughs> Word to Don. If you can just say, hey. A mention. Just say, hey. It, about a year ago, he said we're gonna do a podcast. Don't, not yeah. a hard. This push. probably isn't too far either. right? It's not. Yeah, I'll go yeah. pick him up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fucking pick him up. I'll smoke him you, out. I mean, you don't have air needs. conditioning in here. We do. I'm, oh, we do. Oh, yeah. we do. I yeah. oh, just decided for me, we're not gonna put it on. No, was, usually was, I'm always cold. We talk about it. Italian women are never hot. I'm never hot, but for whatever reason, right now, I can assure you, right now, as we speak, Fallon has a, a sweatsuit. Always. A Playboy sweatsuit, guaranteed. I even have a, a sweatshirt robe. in the car. I'm like, you know what? I'm probably going to need my sweatshirt. The sun sweatshirt. is really kicking right now. It's supposed to be 75 a- today. After the solar... I felt like the sun was stronger yesterday from the morning. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was. I think they did something when they shot rockets into it. Something's going on. Something Something. Is I, going I love the conspiracy concern. theories. we got to end this I podcast. Know. But the conspiracy... I know. Have you followed him? They're outrageous. Some of them are crazy. I, love them. I can't even... Oh. I can't go in the conspiracy theory hole because I won't oh, get out. I have to be it's so, fantastic. so many other things I need to do on social media. I want to be off social media. <laughs> You're more on them. And, we um, had an earthquake the other day. Yeah. Right? I didn't and feel it. My buddy's yeah. like, it's because the solar eclipse. So I go, or maybe, here's an idea. We live in a globe, right? It's round. And there was one over here, and it went through and went to this side of the mm-hmm. earth. What do you think about that? Now she's like, nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> NASA. I'm like, calm okay. down. You'll breathe. see. You'll see in right. two days. Yeah, breathe. yeah, yeah. I know. And then nothing happened yesterday. I'm like, where's the fire and brimstone? It was supposed to be like the devil's comet or yeah. something. Or I, don't, I can't keep track. I bought stuff. the glasses. You did know? you? I looked up. Yeah, I yeah. wore my uh, my welding. Catherine ones. and I did it. Yeah. We we sat outside my house in chairs. Do you remember? It was in 2000. Was 17, 17 rivers? 17. Those glasses were one ninety nine at Seven Eleven. I remember yeah. buying them because I felt like an asshole paying that because I owned welding helmets mm-hmm. up the ass. And I bought them, and then this time around, 
They were six ninety nine. Yep. Do you think big? I, like, I wish I saved the, the ones I had from twenty seventeen. I yeah. door dashed these, so they cost me even more. Holy <laughs> shit! What the? Come on, you can tell me. No, I think With I only paid you. fourteen for two. But I mean, that's with delivery. Uh, that's not, that's too, not bad. too bad. That's yeah. not terrible. Plus the twenty. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've door dashed cigarettes in Manhattan. They were like twenty eight dollars. Yeah, I've done that. I'm not proud of it, but I've done it. I'll probably do it again. Yeah. Do it that's, right now. That's it. <laughs> well, on that note, Cigarettes, thank yeah. you so much thank for coming. Thank you for this having me. I had a great time. I, I love wonderful. the fact that you're just like my wife. I enjoy that's, that. I, I'm glad you now you got to go home and get it. And I got to go to Pizza Land, so we got to go. Right. <coughs> you all want to go to Pizza Land? What? I'm going to go to Pizza Land. I'm going to grab Do Wipe to Joe. There you go. Nice. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Another edition of Dirty Water Boys. I got you, bro. See, See you on the next one. Thank you.